Listen to part of a discussion in an anthropology class. The men of the Northwoods tribes were the hunters. The hunting season began in the fall and continued until midwinter. These expeditions frequently took the hunters away from the village for long periods of time. Moose, deer, beaver, bear, and elk were the animals sought. Large deer drives were common, and small animals were taken with snares or the bow and arrow. Did the women ever go hunting with the men? The women often accompanied their husbands on hunting parties. Their job was to take charge of the camps. Do you mean they just cooked for the men? I thought the Native Americans had more of a system of equality. Overall, men and women shared the labor. On hunting expeditions, women basically supported the men whose job was to procure the game. On the other hand, women controlled other realms of life. For example, women managed all of the agricultural operations. Also, a woman headed each clan, and these women were respected for their role as keepers of the clan. Number one. When did the hunting season take place? Number two. What animals did the Northwoods tribes hunt? Number three. According to the man, how did women participate in hunting? Number four. Which activities did women control? Listen to part of a talk in an introductory art class. The professor is talking about choosing a career in the arts. Before you undertake a career in the arts, there are a number of factors to consider. Whether your goal is to be an actor or an animator, a saxophonist or a sculptor, talent is an essential consideration. But talent alone won't guarantee a successful career in the arts. You also need training, experience, and self-discipline. Most importantly, however, you should realize that a career in the arts requires a personal sense of commitment, a calling, because art does have a history of insecure employment. A lot of artists find it difficult, even impossible, to live on the money they make from their art. Most have to supplement their income by teaching or by working behind the scenes. Or by doing other work not related to the arts. In your opinion, what's the best way for us to know if we really have a calling to art? Well, those of you who are interested in art as a career should talk with arts professionals or work in the arts yourselves. Professionals can give good first-hand advice, but experience is the best way to get a feel for the field. What kind of experience? I mean, how do we get started? Experience doesn't have to be formal. It can be part-time or volunteer work. For example, if you want to be a photographer or graphic designer, you could work for your school newspaper. Or if your interest is acting, you could start out in community theater. The important thing is getting started, spending time doing something in your chosen medium. Number five. According to the professor, what factors are important in choosing a career in the arts? Number six, according to the professor, why does a career in the arts require a special calling? Number seven, how does the professor suggest one get started in a career in the arts? Listen to a discussion in a speech communications class.
For your speaking assignment, you will want to follow a logical series of steps in preparing for your speech. The first step, of course, is to realize the importance of the speech to you. But isn't that always the same in this class? After all, you give us an assignment and we want to get a good grade for it. Yes, that's true. But the grade isn't the only thing that's important. Yeah, Paul. Think of us, your listeners. We want you to believe in what you're saying. Next, of course, you select your subject. Then decide on your purpose. Do you simply want to inform us about your subject, or do you want to influence us in some way? Write down a statement of exactly what you wish to accomplish in the speech. This is the first step in organizing your thoughts. Is entertainment a purpose? It could be, yes. Your purpose could be to make your audience laugh. I expect you to be really funny, Paul. After you decide on your purpose and organize your ideas, you are ready to develop your ideas interestingly and soundly. Why don't you all just take a few minutes to start brainstorming? Jot down ideas that come to mind, things that matter to you, things you feel strongly about. Number eight. According to the instructor, what is the first step in preparing a speech? Number nine. What examples of purpose are mentioned in the discussion? Number ten. What does the instructor want the students to do next? 